Hello and welcome back to the Turing Test. So I finished my Let's Play of the Turing Test and I think you can tell I enjoyed it very much. One last video I thought I would make on this is on the restricted areas that I walked past. So naively when I first started this playthrough uh, I thought that it was maybe a way that we were going to backtrack through the whole game um, but it turns out they were actually secret areas so now I'm going to take a look at them. Uh, thankfully you can actually just chapter select and go straight to the, uh, the areas that they're in. So we're going to go and do that and see what what secrets they unlock, starting with A7. Okay, so the first solution to area A7 is this one here. Uh, I'm not entirely sure how you're meant to figure it out, I guess just by process of elimination. Um, but here we go. It looks like we're in Europa, like we've, we've tunneled out to Europa. Minos Brook. So, oh, Sarah, Sarah's called Sarah Brooke. So she must have had a baby while she was out here. She was pregnant. Oh my God. That's horrible. And then, and then it passed away. So maybe that explains why Sarah is so insistent on, on using the gene, this parasite or whatever, this um, thing that they found to, um, to, to bring it back to Earth so that maybe her child died from some illness or just being born off-world. So maybe she, she feels guilt because the child could have survived. Wow, okay. Let's go to the next area then. Okay, so this area is area B16. Now, this took me a little time to work out, but if you notice, the bridge deactivates when you make a lot of noise. So if you just creep past that little thing that I'm just walking past now, you should be able to get to the other side without deactivating the bridge and then pop that in there. And hello, what have we got in here? Rather old fashioned computer system here actually. Shall we have a polite, oh, are we doing a cheering test? Um. Should we have a polite conversation? Why would I want to do that? Why do you think you get to ask all the questions? Why do you think you have the power? I'm human. Uh, I'm inquisitive like that. I'm simply not convinced that you are human. I think you might be a robot. Wait, no, you're a robot. Uh, you think I'm a robot? Are you insane? I simply do not care. Um, you seem like a robot. Yes, definitely. You're definitely annoying. Uh, you're a very annoying robot. Maybe if we show pissed offness? The Turing test isn't for you if you see I'm a robot, it is to see if you are. Well, I'm not a robot. Well, actually, no, that's a very interesting discussion because obviously I have Tom uh, working through me through the chip, so he might be programming my, uh, my answers. Um, so I'm kind of half robot, really, aren't I? What if the Turing test... Uh Okay, what if the Turing test is to see if you are capable of testing others? But you're the robot, not me. Um, stop calling me a robot. What? I'm not a robot. I'm not in control. True. I am a drone. Yes, yes I am. I am, oh. I'm control. Oh, well this is. Okay. Whatever keys are pressed, it makes no... Well, this is rather apt, isn't it? Because obviously Tom is all about telling me that I have no free will. And yeah, whatever keys make no disparate. I, I desperately want to escape. Uh, I want to escape. I desperately want to help. I can't escape. I want to break free. Okay. Bye, robot. Well, that was upsetting. Um, incidentally, that also gives you the Chivo a polite conversation. So I guess we did have a polite conversation. I wonder if this is what the Turing test looked like back in the day when they actually did it. Like, did they have all these kind of things around? I'm guessing we can't run it again. Um, but there we go. There's secret area number two. Okay, so this is the, ch uh, the secret in chapter three, section 26. And the way to get this door open is uh, you need to hide for yourself from that little camera over there. You see how he's following me around? So if you just block it up with all the containers, then bada bing, 
door is open and we get, oh man, we get a creepy computer. Hello. What is this gonna show? Oh. Oh, my robot. Oh, this is strange. Okay. Am I going to heaven? Is this what heaven is? Am I dead? If I die before I wake, at least in heaven I can skate. It looks like there is a light at the end of this tunnel. Oh, hello. Gosh, they have made it quite heavenly, haven't they? Is, well, I guess I had theories that Tom was acting like he was God or something. Um, I really hope that when we get to heaven, it's not a series of puzzles to test me. Um, hello, Jeebus. Let me in, Jeebus. I also hope that I'm not... Well, actually, yeah, do all robots die and go to heaven? That's a question for you there. Um, where am I... Well, that's the end of that simulation. I'll just be leaving now. Oh, hello. Was this here before? Yeah, I was here before. Weird. On to the next one. Okay, so this is chapter four, uh, sector 36. Uh, and sometimes you can spot a figure disappearing up there. I think it's if you come in straight away um, without waiting for what's his face to talk about his feels. Right, the first thing we're gonna do is pop this one here. Um, pick this one up. Ah, okay, right. I think what we're gonna do here is Make this run down the stairs. There we go. Now, hopefully this will open this one. Yes. Oh, of course you're bloody gonna get stuck. Slinkies always get stuck. Okay. Right. Is it gonna open up this one? Run. Is that what I needed to do? I'm not entirely sure. Seems to have done something. Um, can I feed that? Drop down. Walk through here. Ah, yes, this is it, I think. I think, is it? Daniel, are you all right? I'm perfectly well. I'm going to live forever, don't you know? If you will allow me, I would like to congratulate you on your good work. What are you talking about? Securing the organism, keeping Earth safe. We're not made to live forever, Tom. Especially not here. Why do you say that? We find the cure for death, and now we're immortal. Immortal and alone. I can't live here forever, on some freezing backwater moon, feeding off vegetables grown in my own feces, starving, Endlessly young, a wasted life, lived forever. Daniel, I am sorry that you cannot go home. The ISA are wondering what to do with Ava. What do you mean? She is still on the Fortuna. Do we send her home? Or do we send her a sample of the organism? I could pilot a sample to the Fortuna. You would have to travel back to Europa, Daniel. You couldn't board the Fortuna. The risk of back contamination is too large. Ava would have to bring the sample back to Earth. Could you allow a ship out? I am not able to do that. Executive override. Daniel Joseph McLean. Okay. But only for you, Daniel. The rest of the crew cannot know about this. You say I've gone missing. I am afraid I can't lie. It's not a lie. Oh, so Daniel actually left this colony and went back to the ship to get a sample back to Earth. Presumably. Oh, um, uh, okay, cool, cool. Can I turn you off now? Yeah, less of that, please. Less of that. Let's listen to some audio logs. You called. How's progress? 
Very good. We've exposed several organisms to organism 119. We found out what it does. It has had miraculous results. Go on. We've infected fruit flies and some plants, and they've not aged at all. The organism seems to be repairing them and stop biological aging processes. We don't know how yet. You must be repairing the DNA or has some rejuvenation power. Are you sure? I'm sure. These plants should have died two weeks ago. Huh. I don't know how they react to this. Michelle, can you keep a secret? Of course. Turn off your radio. I think I'm pregnant. How? Oh. Chris? You won't be able to have a child here. Keep your voice down. Sarah? You won't go the full term here. Don't you think I know that? The microbes are The environment. There's not enough food or water. How will you survive? I need to help you get rid of it. I don't want to get rid of it! We could shut down the communication array. Just for a couple of hours. There we go. Um, That is the other end of the conversation. So Sarah's child was fathered by Chris. And I guess they aborted it, maybe, because, you know, how can you expend your resources on another life in such dire situations as surviving on Europa? That's a hunt. So I guess you can't really be pregnant in Jupiter's gravity. I'm sorry. I can't take it anymore. No one has to find out. You did this. You don't mean that. Get off! Hmm. That is sad. Okay, I'm gonna take these here. Okay, so this is chapter five, sector 46. So it looks like two purples make a blue there. Okay, so... uh, I'm gonna take this one. Ram that on there. Um, I'm gonna take this. Run through here. Uh, okay. Now... Hmm, how am I going to do this one? Actually, if there's a blue one there, then I can take that. What does that open? Hello? Have you heard of the Chinese room, Tom? Yes. But I do not understand it. What don't you understand? It argues that a computer that successfully impersonates a human speaker may not understand the meaning of their words. What does that mean? So, there is a person stuck inside of the Chinese room. They are using an instruction book inside of the room to respond to a Chinese speaker outside of the room. Yes? Yes. This means they are following the instructions in a book. This is a set of rules, principles and processes. This is called syntax. To the person in the Chinese room, they are just symbols like any other. Okay. But that's different from semantics. Semantics define what things mean. Our thoughts have meaning. They represent things. English speakers know what the word home means. And they know how it is different from the word house. So what? Programs don't have semantics. Programs only have syntax. Though an increase in syntax can imitate a mind that does not make it a mind, even if it does pass the Turing test. But in the Chinese room, the man and the instruction book, though separately they don't understand Chinese, together they can write it. That's true. 
but even together, they do not understand the meanings of the words. Why not? How can you determine that? What if the man memorized the instruction book? Then he could write Chinese, but he still would have no idea of the word's meanings. I don't understand. If he can speak it, he understands it. You seem to want him to understand it in a different way. But this other way, it is not logical. It does not make sense to me. And that is the Turing test, pretty much. A nice coming together of the Chinese room theory and the Turing test theory. I like the way he breaks it down um, there in terms of semantics and syntax. I think that's a wonderful way of exploring whether or not the Turing test and indeed the Chinese room works. I've been researching. Okay. This Chinese room experiment, it is flawed. Really? If we made a synthetic brain, we could synthesize a duck's behavior 100% accurately. That brain would be indistinguishable from a duck's brain. If it swims like a duck and quacks like a duck, then it is probably a duck. Okay, Tom. Listen, Mikhail. I know the difference between a house and a home. Yes, good. Do you think you're better than me? No. But you think I am different, do you? I am conscious. Me too. No, you're not. You've just arrived at that conclusion, because that's the idea your programming converged on. I am conscious. How about you prove to me you are conscious? I'm not arguing with a robot. You're not better than me, Mikhail. Hmm. <sighs> nice little uh, philosophical debate there. Oh! We're in the chi they've literally created a Chinese room. Okay. Well, it's been a long time since I've read Chinese characters. I, uh, I learned Chinese through pinyin. Not through, uh, through characters. I find characters still very difficult to read. Although, um, you know, I can read the basics, you know, like opening, uh, exit and things like that. Um, which is instantly the word for close. Okay, let's see if I can get to the other side of the Chinese room with all the English words. There we go. Oh. Ah. Okay, I'm going to need something more substantial than that to get through. Right, let's see. Okay, so that's the solution to the last one. You may have to work it out on your own, though. How to get those in order. Um, so I guess we're in the second half of the Chinese room. Uh, lots of notes over here. Some more audio logs, some more words. What does that one say? What does this notebook say? This is just pictures. Okay, let's go over to the log. If it waddles like a duck and it quacks like a duck, then it probably is a duck. What are you trying to prove here, Tom? I am like you. No, you're not. A steam train and an electric train both seem to operate identically, but are operated by completely different principles. You simulate thinking. I actually think. That is a very hurtful statement, Mikhail. It's true. I can't hurt your feelings, Tom. You don't have any feelings. Yes, I do. No, you don't. Override whatever routine has told you that. It's wrong. Thomas got really obsessed with the Turing test. That's the Chinese room with me. He won't stop trying to prove to me he's conscious. But I am conscious, Mikhail. Shut up. We're having a private conversation here. It's okay. I don't think he'll get it. Avoid talking about it. I'm trying. Okay, so this is chapter 6, 56, allegedly the hardest one in the game. Uh, I've had to resort to a walkthrough to get this far, uh, get to this point. So uh, that's the first bit done there. Uh, and then we transfer all the blues over he here. C come on. Transfer all the blues this way. Hopefully I can catch them all. Gotta catch them all, gotta catch them all. 
Yeah, I had to resort to uh, a let's play on the last two, not a let's play, a walkthrough. An actual handwritten guide. I got no shame in it. I'm here for secrets, not so much for the puzzles. And uh, I won't lie, uh, I stayed up incredibly late to record this. It's now two in the morning and I'm my brain is a bit frazzled. So that's that bit. Uh, and then you take one and then put it here. Now, um, so basically the way this one is solved is basically this is greater than and more than and less than and all than than that. But I am far too exhausted uh, to figure this one out with my brain. So I will concede to people who are far cleverer than me. Um, and use their screenshots. Because frankly, I've been recording this all day. Uh, Oopsie, not that one there. And I'm I'm a bit a wee bit too tired to work out maths. Maths was never my strongest point either. More the sass. Okay, one, two, uh I think that one there. Okay, there we go. And then this room. This one here, this one here, and then three on the end. There you go. And then if we bring these forward. We need one there. Uh, one on that side there. One down the far end. And one last one here. There you go. Uh, so I had to go back to get some more beams for this one, go back a little bit further. Uh, ooh, I think I might have to go all the way back to the beginning. There we go, there's one there. It's kind of like, um, oh God, what's that game where you, you have an exponential amount of beads and you have to get them in all the right holes? Right, almost there. So we take three out with us. And all the way down the corridors. Okay, so there's one final configuration here, uh, which is that one there, that one there, that one there. And then if I take this and fill there, then that's gonna open this door over here. And bada boom, oh, Europa, oh wow. Uh, is this like some kind of die-hard vault? What do we got here? The goddess Europa was given Talos. Talos, a machine man made of bronze, was made to protect the shores of her kingdom. I suppose there is nothing new under the sun. I know you're reading this, Tom. She is not yours to protect. She is ours. Well, I guess in this analogy, Talos is Tom. Um, and these must be paintings of Europa, the Roman goddess, I believe, of Earth. Um, and maybe this is the core, I guess. So feel free to read this in your own time. So this is the last secret in chapter seven, sector 66. So I think the way to do it here is pull this up and put it there. Hop, nope, okay. Hold on, let me just move that a little bit further there. Pull that out and then can I hit that from here? There we go, okay, so that's fired that. And that is the final room. The achievement for this, by the way, is called Thinking Outside the Box, which I think is quite funny that we're literally using a box to block the door. So what are we gonna find here? Gosh, okay, so some quite detailed dissertation notes, again, on the Chinese room argument. So yeah, if you want to read this in your own time, feel free to pause and read them now. <laughs> and of course the imitation game is what the latest Benedict Cumberbatch film uh, was based on. He was playing Alan Turin. Um, and yeah, the imitation game as in, you know, can, AI imitate humans. 
uh, is why it was called the Imitation Game. And the Lord God formed man of the dust on the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life, and man became a living soul. Uh, so there we go. I believe that is the last room and that is the last set of secrets. Um, feel free to pause and read that in your own time. Um, it looks like someone's dissertation on sort of thoughts of the Chinese room, the Turing test, all of that. I noticed that in the credits, actually in my Let's Play, uh, they credited a doctor at a university. So I wonder if it's his dissertation or maybe one of the game devs uh, who came up with all of this. I must say, like, I think that the puzzles in this are really quite clever. I really love the intuitive way that you were kind of taught how to overcome things and introduce new elements that came back to kind of haunt you later on. Uh, what does this say? Can't quite see. Congratulations on that. Um, but yeah, uh, as I've said before, I thoroughly enjoyed the Turing test. Um, if you haven't seen my Let's Play, if you're just here for the secrets, uh, head on over, give it a watch. I hope you like it. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone. I hope that this res uh, Restricted Rooms video has given you some more food for thought on the events of the game. Uh, but yeah, thank you very much for watching me and I'll see you guys next time.